You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode number 1021. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Thank you for sending in your questions. If you haven't subscribed, we would really appreciate it if you would do so. And obviously, we love your reviews. We want to hear how we're doing. We want to hear what you think. And we want other people to be aware of the podcast. So help us out if you don't mind. We appreciate it. We would really greatly appreciate it if you do help us out. And we appreciate everyone who has already helped us out. And we appreciate everyone who is already in the Drone You community. And is it shocking that Drone You members are some of the most successful in the drone industry as a whole? No, not at all, because they learn from experience. Anyway. Indeed. On that, on that note, um, today we are talking about the Parrot Anolfi Thermal. Now, we had actually talked about this drone before, and I had made a mistake uh, in talking about the sensor. So the camera sensor is actually smaller than the Mavic Pro sensor, but literally by a tenth of an inch. And um, in addition, it is not a global or mechanical shutter like I had mentioned previously. So I would just like to clarify that. I erroneously said that before. So erroneous on all accounts. Uh, so I thought I would just clarify that Scared key me. point really quick. Um, so let's go ahead and jump the gun here and go right into uh, the question today, which again is brought to you by our in-person mapping classes. If you wanna learn how to grow your business, you wanna know, extra channels of revenue, then I invite you to learn about drone mapping because there are multiple channels of revenue that you can take advantage of. Whether you're in the film business and you want to create highly accurate and beautiful 3D models for VFX or for scouting in the film business, or maybe you want to conduct volumetric measurements because you're an aggregator and you have an aggregate business where you are moving stockpiles of dirt and aggregate every day. Or maybe you want to do an accurate reconstruction of what's been built to essentially have a permanent record of installation or to just showcase what's been built against the as-built. That's one simple thing you can do as well. In addition, it's a great tool for 3D reconstruction if you are ever trying to do building as a whole so you can showcase what a potential site will look like because you can add in the real world environment inside of your Revit model to add uh, just an unprecedented level of visualization. In addition, if you are a high level real estate uh, broker, you may be interested in interactive modeling as you can create an exterior 3D model and an interior 3D model to provide the most interactive environment to view and engage with a home. Uh, we've got hmm. deliverable examples of all of those points if you'd like to see them or just come to a DroneU mapping class where you will see them. Just go to thedroneu.com or droneu.education and go to training events and you'll see that we're coming to Denver. We've got our upcoming NTSB accident reconstruction class, which is just more like a intermediate to advanced comprehensive mapping class. In addition, we also have mapping classes coming up in Tampa, Florida, and Phoenix, Arizona, and San Diego, California. Excited to be going back to San Diego. Yeah, it's always good to go back to San Diego, but we are not going to Phoenix. We are going to Austin. Oh, Austin. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're going to Austin in November. That's we right, are. because we're also going to go to Worst Fest. It's drone you tradition, Rob. Don't there's a reason up. why <laughs> there's a mapping class in the Austin area. <laughs> right around November, November 8th. <laughs> huh. Weird. Yeah. Oh, Hey, gosh. well, I mean. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Let's hear the question. Oh, man. This is Dave in Kansas City. I would like to know whether I could use the new Parrot Thermal Drone for solar inspections. Does it produce radiometric data that's compatible with the Raptor software? Thanks. Bye. Thank you, David. Um, well, you know, the drone comes out and says it's a thermal drone. And so, yeah, naturally the question is, well, how much can I actually do with the drone? 
That's a great question. Yeah. Um, so, okay, he asked a very specific question, though. He asked the question of, can I take radiometric JPEGs with the Parrot Anolfi drone? And the answer is no. Um, now, for a lot of people, what does that actually mean? A radiometric JPEG or a dot R JPEG actually showcases a temperature value for every single pixel that's in that particular picture. The only way to get an accurate representation of that temperature value is if the camera has some sort of relative temperature of the area around it. So the radiometric camera is essentially calibrated against the existing temperature of the area or environment around said object. Mm. So it's much more accurate. But radiometric thermal cameras also cost exponentially more to do a job. So the Parrot Anolfi, can it take radiometric JPEGs? The answer is no. Can it work with Raptor Map software? The answer is no. Um, and what type of jobs, you know, what is it good for? What can I do with it? And the answer is it's great for home inspectors. It's great for police officers looking for someone who was just ejected from a vehicle or there's a suspect on the run or they dropped mm. a firearm somewhere and they want to look for it. All really, really, really good use cases and examples um, of how to use that drone. Um, in addition, if you wanted to do low-end roof inspections, like I wouldn't do commercial-grade roof inspections with this particular drone, but roof inspections, like let's say for um, uh, any of the insurance companies, this mm -hmm. would be a great drone for that. Right. I think it would also be a great drone, and this is just a personal uh, use case of this drone, but mold inspections for houses because there's so many Airbnbs that are out there that are disgusting, like absolutely not healthy for people to go in because I don't think some of the older generation understands that the health risks of mold exposure. I think, yeah, most people don't. Yeah, most people don't. Um, if you've ever, ever heard someone um, of getting Lyme disease like symptoms, there's actually a study that just came out recently that most of the people who said that they were battling Lyme disease are actually battling a biotoxin or a mold-based disease. So I thought that was really interesting, actually extremely interesting. So for hmm. me, I think that this drone could be really cool to just fly around homes um, for, uh, for, for a mold inspection. I mean, it's not really a mold inspection, but it'll show you where there's water prevalent and then you can do further analysis there. And um, now that said, I think that there are a lot of other great uses for this drone. Um, gosh, uh, there's, there's, I mean, search and rescue, it could be a good drone if flown in a systematic manner, if flown in a systematic way, working with a team and a chain of command, just going to preface all of those. So as, as far as search and rescue, how close do you have to be to the subject for it to give you usable data? Pretty close. You do? Yeah. And also it depends on the time of day because mm. you need that thermal. Cooler like, it is, the better. Yeah. You need that thermal differentiation. Right. Because if you have a hot body on hot 95 degree dirt, just like you do here in New Mexico in the middle of the day, like the propensity for you finding someone is so low. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot that goes into that. We're going to be announcing our search and rescue class here very shortly. Very excited about that. Um, maybe we should just go ahead and pick up an Anolfi drone and do a little SAR testing with it to see. We, yeah, we probably should. So, and, and I think his question was specific about solar inspections, right? So I assume he's talking about solar panels. Yes, which we cannot use this drone for that. Okay. So now you may be able to see a bad panel in the right conditions, but this camera is not going to work with Raptor Maps. Right, and it's not going to be a real, a very reliable option Correct. for inspecting solar panels. And therefore, if it's not reliable, then how do you trust the data Correct. so you can't use it? It's kind of like LiDAR. There's some LiDAR units from Leica that have a closed lens versus an open lens. The open mm. lens gives you a lot of reflection and a lot of noise and a lot of crap. The closed lens gives you much better detail. And we're kind of, it's the analogies, it kind of works, but just bear with me here, people. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do I say this? Um, bald tire versus BFG tire. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, just so much difference in, again, detail. But um, anyway, with that said, um, I think it's really, really, really important to, to discuss that radiometric cameras are very expensive. There are units out there that can, that can help you do drone mapping for solar inspections. And the most economical solution that works is the Inspire One with the original XT camera that will actually allow you to do solar inspections for a pretty economical rate. Very cool. Anyway, did I stun you there, Rob? No, no. Well, that's gonna do Not it for our show today. 
If you have a question, please go to askdroneu.com. We've got a lot of interviews coming up to covering a lot of the new products that are coming out, and I think you're going to be really excited about all of it. So make sure and uh, check it out. Yes, please, and uh, do share. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name's Rob. This is Ask Drone You. (laughs) 